Namaste and good evening, everyone. From the makers of Kerala Literature Festival, we are presenting the second edition of Spaces, a festival of culture, politics, and design. I, architect Ashish M., associate professor at DC School of Architecture and Design, Bhagaman, will be co-hosting this event. An event promoted by DC Kerakemuri Foundation and DC School of Architecture and Design, Vagaman and Trivandrum campuses. DC Kerakemuri Foundation and DC School is behind one of the India's largest literature fe festivals and literature event. I extend my hearty welcome to you all. The first edition of Spaces an open space for different thoughts was put forward on the 29th August at Kanakunna Palace, Trivandrum, inaugurated by our Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan to celebrate architecture as a social necessity which derives its form and aesthetics from social cultural fabric along with culture, politics and design. In this phase of global pandemic, we have introduced an online version of Kerala Architecture Festival. We are here to talk on experiences of Indian urbanistic from pan-India perspectives with special focuses on cities of Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Korikod, Kochi, and Trivandrum. The pursuit by which each esteemed speakers with backgrounds of both political, social, and architectural forefronts to establishing synchronization through design and holistic approaches is participated in this venture. Renowned historian of early India, Professor Romila Thapar, and other eminent dignitaries like Sri Jairam uh, Ramesh, architect K.T. Ravindran, Dr. P. K. Rajeshagaran, Sri V. Sri Ram, S. Gopalakrishnan, Captain Ramesh Babu, V. V. Haridas, Architect Sarat Sundar Rajiv, Bina Tar Tarakan, K. J. Sohan, Bo Boni Thomas, Malvika. Banerjee and architect Mahesh Chakrabarti are participating in this event on a weekly basis. The topic for today is Architecture of Power, Central Vista, the ninth city of Delhi. Our honorable and distinguished speakers for the evening are architect Professor K.T. Ravindran and S. Gopalakrishnan. To an audience, we are socially conscious to an audience who are socially conscious and aware for architect KT Ravindran and S. Gopalakrishnan. In his Magnapus career architecture in the 1960s was a popular career choice, yet it drew young KT Ravindran sir from Talisheri to pursue it. Five decades later, he has to his and to the country's credit, an extraordinary body of work. As former head of urban design and dean at School of Planning and Architecture, as founder and president of Institute of Urban Designers India, as vice chairman of Environmental Impact Assessment Committee of Government of India, as former chairman of Delhi Urban Art Commission, as Dean Emeritus as at the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors School of Built Environment, Noida, and currently as one of the five members on the advisory board drawn from all around the world on the UN project in New York. He has won uh, competitions run by central government to build a memorial for the former president of uh, Rajiv, uh, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi at uh, Sri Perum 
Bodu near Chennai is possible in expressing architecture as a symbol rather than merely functional is worth mentioning. Welcome, sir, Katie Davindran, sir. In his career on studying and understanding Gandhian principles and ideology on how M.K. Gandhi's expressions of work and craftsmanship, the main principle of M.K. Gandhi on on focused on engaging oneself with physical with physical with one's hand is in engaging material craftsmanship in all levels. S. Gopal Krishnan is a cultural comment commentator, author, musicologist, columnist, critic, with his involvement to varied personalities of culture and music. Born in Kotiam, uh, born in Kotiam, Tirunakkala, Kerake, Kerake Tavira House, father of T. S. Uh, Sridhar and Naya and mother of J. Bharati Amma. His education expands into the fields of Max from CMS College, further to which he acquired his master's in the field of philosophy from Horikod University and master's from Madhira Kame, uh, Kamaraja University on the Gandhian studies. He started his career in India, in All India Radio and gave major contributions in the digi station of its archival recordings. Presently, he's a part of Delhi uh, podcasting and various cultural forefronts as noted commentators and contemporary, contemporary writings and has acquired himself the Malayalam prose of Kerala Sahitya Academy. We appreciate all present to send their questions into the panel board. Without further delay, let's welcome both the speakers to exchange and express views on architecture of power, Central Vista, the ninth city of Delhi. Spaces as how we see it without fear or favor. I invite Sir S. Gopal Krishnan to, to start the conversation with architect Katie Ravindran, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish, for the uh, kind uh, words. In this program, we are going to be able to do some DC books, DC School of Architecture, DC Kakamuri Foundation, and Nadatuna Kerala Architecture Festival. In this session, we are going to be able to do some urban. Uh, architect Silveralaya, uh, Ninda Varshangal of Parisia, Parisia, Sambatumai, Namada Munileti, in the Prosakiti, uh, Revindrinumai, E. Session, uh, Sam Sari and Karina, the Niki, Valia Sandosham Lagarivana Karanam, uh, Yanga Aritolari Tunuti and Jumudel, Delhi, Zidikin or Alana, Delhi, the Mukachai and the Maran Buna, Ru, a project in a Burjanam, Sam Sari, you know. India Palestine and Agriaya, Delhi, a superthan administrative area. Puduki Padianula, Pathadi, you would a Central Vista Redevelopment Project in the Bay. Aribur. Now, a young country she lit a noodle he nagar pinde, Mukachaya than a Martina e Pathadike, Anugula Mayum, Pratigula Mayumula, Palava than a weird Nakari. E. Vishape Kurjana, I mean, the Vishadam. Churchy and Boguna, the Etebu Manuji and I are in the Anam Kilipichi. Then I the Idibati Nala Umbrekim, Piranum in Udesha Tilana, India government, Vala Petun, E. Project to my Mumbo to Boguna, would you can I the Idibatinali, May Massa Tilana, E. Narendra Modi, other than doing good coincide in the election, we program in Javasan Tamil. There are the moon kilometer roll of Dair Kemula, Ratch Patian, Walia Martingal, Varan Boguna, the Idibana Idatola, Podi Dupayana, Government Aidinuindi, 
നീക്കി വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത് ഡിസംബർ പത്താം തീയതിയാണ് പുതിയ പാർലമെന്റ് മന്ദിരത്തിന്റെ ഭൂമി പൂജ നടത്തിയത് ഈ കാര്യത്തിൽ ഈ സമയത്ത് എനിക്ക് എന്റെ ഓർമ്മയിൽ വരുന്നത് ആയിരത്തി ആയിരത്തി തൊള്ളായിരത്തി ഇരുപതിൽ അതായത് കൃത്യം നൂറ് കൊല്ലം മുൻപ് ഈ സമയത്താണ് സർ എഡ്വിൻ ലുത്തിയൻസിന്റെയും സർ ഹെഡ്വേർഡ് ബേക്കറിന്റെയും നേതൃത്വത്തിൽ ഇപ്പോഴുള്ള പാർലമെന്റ് മന്ദിരത്തിന്റെ പണി തുടങ്ങിയത് അതിന് കൃത്യം നൂറ് കൊല്ലം കഴിയുമ്പോഴാണ് അതിന്റെ പുതിയ പാർലമെന്റ് മന്ദിരത്തിന്റെ ഭൂമി പൂജ നടക്കുന്നത് എന്നതുകൂടി ഞാൻ പറയുകയാണ് പുതുതായി ഉണ്ടാക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് ഞാൻ ഇദ്ദേഹം അഭിമുഖ സംഭാഷണത്തിലേക്ക് പോകുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് മുഖവരയായി ഞാൻ ചില പോയിന്റ്സ് പറയുന്നത് മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ പുതുതായി ഉണ്ടാകാൻ പോകുന്ന കെട്ടിടങ്ങൾ ഈ പുതിയ വിസ്റ്റ പ്രോജക്റ്റുമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട് ഡൽഹിയിൽ ഉണ്ടാകാൻ പോകുന്ന പുതിയ കെട്ടിടങ്ങൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒന്നൊരു പുതിയ പാർലമെന്റ് മന്ദിരം വരാൻ പോകുന്നു രണ്ട് സെൻട്രൽ വിസ്റ്റ അവന്യൂ വരുന്നു മൂന്ന് കോമൺ സെൻട്രൽ സെക്രട്ടറിയേറ്റ് വരുന്നു നാല് വൈസ് പ്രസിഡന്റിന്റെ പുതിയ ഓഫീസും വീടും ഉണ്ടാകുന്നു അഞ്ച് പ്രൈം മിനിസ്റ്റർക്ക് പുതിയ വീടും ഓഫീസും ഉണ്ടാകുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതാണ് പൊളിച്ചു കളയാൻ പദ്ധതിയിട്ടിരിക്കുന്ന കെട്ടിടങ്ങൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അനെക്സ് ബിൽഡിംഗ്സ് ഓഫ് ദി നാഷണൽ ആർക്കൈവ്സ് ഐ ജി എൻ സി ഇന്ദിരാഗാന്ധി നാഷണൽ സെന്റർ ഫോർ ദി ആർട്സ് ജവഹർലാൽ നെഹ്റു ഭവൻ കൃഷി ഭവൻ നാഷണൽ മ്യൂസിയം നിർമ്മാൺ ഭവൻ രക്ഷാഭവൻ ശാസ്ത്രി ഭവൻ ഉദ്യോഗ് ഭവൻ ഇപ്പോഴുള്ള വൈസ് പ്രസിഡന്റിന്റെ വീട് വിജ്ഞാൻ ഭവൻ ഇതൊക്കെയാണ് പൊളിച്ചു മാറ്റുവാൻ വേണ്ടി ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് ഈ വിഷയത്തെ കുറിച്ച് നമ്മോട് വിശദമായിട്ട് സംസാരിക്കാൻ സന്നിഹിതനായിരിക്കുന്നത് ഇന്ത്യയിലെ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട അർബൻ നഗരാസൂത്ര വാസ്തുശില്പികളിൽ ഒരാളായ പ്രൊഫസർ കെ ടി രവീന്ദ്രൻ ആണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിനെ കുറിച്ച് അവതാരകൻ അശിഷ് വിശദമായിട്ട് സംസാരിച്ചു അത് ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലായിരുന്നു അതുകൊണ്ട് ഈ പരിപാടി കേൾക്കുന്ന ആളുകൾക്ക് പറയാൻ വേണ്ടി ഞാൻ ഒന്ന് ചില കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഒന്ന് ആവർത്തിക്കുന്നു മുപ്പത് വർഷക്കാലം ഡൽഹിയിലെ പ്രശസ്തമായ സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് പ്ലാനിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ആർക്കിടെക്ചറിലെ അർബൻ ഡിസൈൻ വിഭാഗത്തിൽ പ്രൊഫസറും തലവനും ആയിരുന്നു പ്രൊഫസർ കെ ടി രവീന്ദ്രൻ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഒൻപത് മുതൽ മൂന്ന് വർഷക്കാലങ്ങൾ ഡൽഹി അർബൻ ആർട്ട് കമ്മീഷന്റെ ചെയർപേഴ്സൺ ആയിരുന്നു അദ്ദേഹം മലയാളിയായ പ്രൊഫസർ കെ ടി രവീന്ദ്രൻ തലശ്ശേരിയിലാണ് ജനിച്ചത് അദ്ദേഹത്തിന്റെ സ്കൂൾ വിദ്യാഭ്യാസം തലശ്ശേരിയിലും ഡിഗ്രി ചെന്നൈയിൽ ചെന്നൈയിലെ മദ്രാസിലെ സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് ആർക്കിടെക്ചർ ആൻഡ് പ്ലാനിങ്ങിൽ നിന്നായിരുന്നു പോസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രാജുവേഷൻ അദ്ദേഹത്തിന് ഡൽഹിയിലെ സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് പ്ലാനിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ആർക്കിടെക്ചറിൽ നിന്നാണ് അവിടെ തന്നെയാണ് അദ്ദേഹം ദീർഘകാലം സേവനം അനുഷ്ഠിച്ചത് ആയിരത്തി തൊള്ളായിരത്തി എഴുപത്തി രണ്ട് മുതൽ രണ്ട് കൊല്ലക്കാലം അദ്ദേഹം ഇറാനിൽ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു വലിയ പരിചയ സമ്പത്ത് അദ്ദേഹം ഇറാനിൽ നിന്നും കൊണ്ടുവരികയും അദ്ദേഹത്തിന് ജീവിതത്തിനെയും ജീവിതത്തിന്റെ കാഴ്ചപ്പാടുകളെ ഒക്കെ മാറ്റുന്നതിന് ഇറാനിലെ ഒരു പ്രത്യേക സാഹചര്യം ഇറാനിന്റെ ട്രാൻസിഷന് തൊട്ട് മുമ്പുള്ള ഒരു കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ അദ്ദേഹം ഇറാനിൽ ചെലവഴിച്ചതാണ് അതിനുശേഷം രണ്ടു കൊല്ലത്തോളം അദ്ദേഹം യൂറോപ്പും ആഫ്രിക്കയും ഒറ്റയ്ക്ക് സന്ദർശിച്ച അദ്ദേഹമായിട്ട് സംസാരിക്കുമ്പോൾ വ്യക്തിപരമായിട്ട് സംസാരിക്കുമ്പോൾ വലിയ കൗതുകം നിറഞ്ഞ ജീവിതാനുഭവങ്ങളുള്ള ആളാണ് നമ്മുടെ കൂടെ ഇപ്പോൾ ഇരിക്കുന്നത് പിന്നെ കൽക്കത്തയിലും ഹൈദരാബാദിലും എല്ലാം പോയതിനു ശേഷം ഡൽഹിയിൽ തിരിച്ചു വരികയും മുപ്പത് കൊല്ലക്കാലം അദ്ദേഹം ഡൽഹിയിലെ ഏറ്റവും ഇന്ത്യയിലെ തന്നെ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട ആർക്കിടെക്ചർ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് വിദ്യാലയങ്ങളിൽ ഒന്നിൽ പ്രഗത്ഭമായ പ്രഗത്ഭനായ അധ്യാപകനായി സേവനം അനുഷ്ഠിച്ചു പിന്നീട് അദ്ദേഹം ആർ ഐ സി എസ് സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് ബിൽഡ് എൻവയോൺമെന്റ് സ്ഥാപിക്കുകയും ചെറിയ ഒരു ഇതിൽ നിന്നും ആയിരത്തി ഇരുന്നൂറോളം വിദ്യാർത്ഥികളുള്ള വലിയ സ്ഥാപനമായി അതിനെ വളർത്തുകയും ചെയ്തു എന്നുള്ളതാണ് വെൽക്കം ടു ദി ഷോ പ്രൊഫസർ കെ ടി രവീന്ദ്രൻ ഹാപ്പി ടു ഹാവ് യു ഇൻ ദിസ് സെഷൻ ഈ ന്യൂഡൽഹി സെൻട്രൽ വിസ്റ്റ റീ ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് പ്രോജക്ട് കുറിച്ച് സംസാരിക്കുമ്പോൾ നഗരങ്ങൾ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് തലസ്ഥാന നഗരങ്ങൾ കാലാനുകൃതമായി കാലക്രമത്തിനനുസരിച്ച് മാറേണ്ടതല്ലേ അത്തരം ഒരു യുക്തിയിൽ പ്രാഥമിക യുക്തിയിൽ നോക്കിയാൽ ആ റാഷണൽ വെച്ച് നോക്കുമ്പോൾ ഈ റീഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് പ്രോജക്ടിനെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് താങ്കൾ കാണുന്നത് sorry with your kind permission i'll mostly speak in english because yes. it's a
so i my malayalam is not good enough to make a, to to have a technical discussion so with your kind permission i mostly speak in english malayalathil ningal parayun nokka enikku manasilavunnundu enikku pakshe malayalathil answer cheyanulla sheshi illa yes fine sahaji sheshi illa adu kondu go ahead english answer cheyam അപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഈ സെൻട്രൽ വ്യവസ്ഥ പ്രോജക്റ്റ് കാണുന്നത് നിങ്ങളിപ്പോൾ ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്ത ബിൽഡിങ്സിൻ്റെ ഡെമോളിഷനും പുതിയ ബിൽഡിങ്സിൻ്റെ സ്ഥാപനങ്ങളും മറ്റുമായിട്ടല്ല ഐ എം ഹാവിങ് എ വ്യൂ ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഫ്രം ദ പെർസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് ഏർബൻ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് ഡൽഹി നോട്ട് ഓൺലി ദ ഏർബൻ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് ഡൽഹി ബട്ട് എ ജനറൽ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഓഫ് ദ പൊളിറ്റിക്കൽ ഹിസ്റ്ററി that has happened in in india since uh, independence now at the time of independence when the when congress government came to power under nehru uh, the transition from the colonial systems of bureaucracy and the type of institutions they had and the buildings they built the, the buildings they occupied and the and the areas which are under governance all were quite a smooth transition because congress did not congress party ideologically did not uh, believe in destroying what was there to build what is new what nehru did was to establish new institutions like for instance he set up the entire press area land was allotted to people to build press uh, press buildings he uh, established the entire scientific establishment csri and so on and so forth he established a number of new cultural institutions and he also established a number of uh, 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 number of uh, uh, educational programs and so on so his whole aim was to ensure that there is a kind of continuity of uh, uh, of world view uh, which uh, continued from the colonial uh, rather he built upon what was established by the colonial people he didn't destroy them and he uh, it was easy for them to occupy these buildings in the central vista and reconstruct some of the bhavans that we see many of them you have listed for demolition so <clears throat> these bhavans at that time had a certain kind of architecture and it is not possible for us to say that they are undistinguished buildings they don't bear any they don't bear any kind of uh, historic significance it's not possible to say that because they were a part of an evolution of architecture in public buildings that was initiated by the british originally in the turn of the 19th century originally Uh, from the indo saracenic style of building mm. which was used by the british to built up all the institutions like universities and hospitals and uh, uh, high courts etc etc so these uh, civilian institutions were all built using uh, indo saracenic style and there was a natural transition of that style by the pwd into the modern era once the country became independent so they devised new buildings large masses of buildings all these bhavans using elements of the indo saracenic architecture and mixing with the modernist architecture that was becoming popular in india at that time and the modernism was also nehru's vision to have a very specific indian modernism as a defined style in building so it's towards that that these buildings actually uh, took an aesthetic position and that is very much part of the history of the growth of our country's uh, architecture so that's one perspective uh, the other perspective is should i go on or you have want to would like to interject and ask anything mr so no, gopal would, would you yeah. like to ask intervene in any way or? should i continue talking no no i you know i you you mentioned about uh, you know uh, delhi ude adhunika delhi ude adayathu 
the british the british period la how they handled or the how they uh, you know has looked at the new, new upcoming new delhi uh you know the, 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 their capital city and the way they uh, built the new city you, you clarified uh, you know very well now uh, can you just uh, elaborate nehru's contribution you know how nehru found look uh, you know uh, new talents for making the new the, the new constructions in delhi and around even building chandigarh and all uh, you know you, if you can mention a little, uh, in few sentences you know nehru's contribution uh, in, uh, from 1947 onwards right uh, nehru's contribution is, is very significant from the perspective of the current demolitions which are happening mm. because that's precisely what they are trying to demolish is nehru's contribution into the urban fabric of delhi mm. one by one they are looking at revisiting nehru's contributions and the first attempt was done in destroying pragati maidan to rebuild a contemporary uh, glitzy kind of uh, uh, enclave of buildings uh, which is now currently happening they demolished all the symbols of nehruvian time inside there because it was pragati maidan was promoted squarely by nehru uh, initially and subsequently taken up during indira gandhi's time in 1972 73 the competition was called and the whole place was built up so that's the one of the first things which they demolished en masse yeah including the most controversial building which is the hall of nations designed by rajdewal and mahendraj the mm. hall of nations demolition was a very big event in architecture circles and all of us were very sad to see the building go because it was a, a milestone of a building both in structural terms and in its architectural language mm -hmm. so uh, destroying nehru's uh, legacy is one of the motivations for this project mm -hmm. so nehru in fact uh, promoted uh, four or five people uh, during the nehru era giving them large projects to do and so on one was mr habib rahman mm. who had in fact uh, designed the first uh, uh, steel multi story building in calcutta when he came back from usa he was an engineer not an architect mm. and he also designed a gandhi memorial in bengal which impressed nehru very much because he used a kind of a syncretic language for building up the memorial for gandhi so he in fact invited him to come to delhi and take over as the chief architect of cpwd and through him he realized an entire set of uh, quote and quote modernist building which uh, was part of nehru's vision for the modern india what is called the nehruvian project for modern mm. india mm. Yeah. so he also promoted stein he invited stein Who, who had come into India to Bengal actually as part of uh, the Ford Foundation uh, and uh, <coughs> Ford Foundation work, and then he Nehru invited him to come to Delhi and establish himself here. Then he promoted uh, people like Kanminde. Kanminde was an employee of the CPWD, an architect in the CPWD, and finally he steps out of CPWD to start his own practice and. the entire range of scientific buildings which are you find today standing in india were then then onwards built by kanvinde so nehru's pet projects for science nehru's pet project for industrialization and nehru's pet projects for creating a new modern india and a separate architectural language for that was found expression through these people's work he also invited leko buzia leko buzia actually was an accident that he was invited but leko buzia comes into chandigarh and creates what is called uh, a modern capital for a democratic india so the so the institutions of democracy like the assembly and the high court and the and the secretariat become the central pieces of chandigarh's architecture 
and a gridiron plan in which he believed at that time, Peruzia believed in the motor car and the gridiron plan, that was imposed onto a landscape and it is said that there was a Harappan site below the car, below Chandigarh at that time. So Nehru had very specific contempt for uh, what we call heritage. Yes. He, he didn't Amen. care for history. He wants Amen. innovation, he wants science, he wants Modernism, he want modern movement. Abey, abo abey in in the in the other chodiya madhu mai the bande patana. Yi heritage, rand theram heritage sine markano, maichikalayano, erasiyano, ulori shramam. Yi putiya central vista redevelopment project ni pini lunda na visusi kino rala na yaan vikti parema. Rand heritage. Ini. ओर्म शरिया सप्टंबर इंडिया टूडे क्यापिटल डेक्सटोपियादीर्घ लेखन प्रोफस के रवींद्रन एम चर्चा रीडेवलपमेंट प्रोजक्ट फस्ट ब्लू प्रिंट वन सामयत यु हाव क्रिटिड ए चौद अपकड़ी <laughs> with 25 30 years of uh, historic distance one is able to see how the rise of the uh, the jansan party and its oh. subsequent formation of the government as bjp under vajpayee and the buildings which are built by them at that time were are uncannily matching their plans today mm. so it's difficult to assign that kind of foresight and vision to a party which never held any power but that's what in hindsight now i can see that mm. their move to locate the the uh, the temple on the mm. river bed which yes. is called the akshardham temple their plan to locate the akshardham temple on the river bed in perfect access to the rashtrapati bhavan dome and the jaipur column is now the main structuring factor for the moves they are making to rebuild the central vista mm. at this time yeah. mm. so this is a this is a very uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, kind of uh, what you can call uh, 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 a historic accidents a series of yes. historic accidents finally adding up to a new story new narrative about the motive of this whole project if you give me two more minutes i can go into a little more details yes, on please. how the actual shift is taking place yeah? uh, mainly when uh, when the british built their capital here it was uh, 1911 that they decided that uh, they will shift the capital from calcutta to delhi there was a big darbar held by the king of england in india in delhi in 1911 and as a surprise to even the viceroy he announced in that meeting that the capital will be shifted from calcutta to delhi yeah so very quickly they started inviting people to prepare plans and all and all those plans which are prepared were taking a position vis-a-vis the old city of delhi which was earlier the center of power <coughs> Basically, in 1803, when the British made their first incursion into Delhi, military incursion through the Kashmiri Gate area, they settled in that vicinity, and that area functioned as the uh, as the British, more or less like the British capital at that time. So, post 1857 war, the Saint James Church was built in that in near Kashmiri Gate. and it became the centre piece of the british intervention in india they made a series of other interventions in places like chandni chowk and they created clock towers the usual ploys which are used 
which they have inherited, the European culture has inherited from the Renaissance movement, were deployed in Delhi also. So when they conceived the new city, they always made one access in clear sight of the door of the St. James Church. So uh, when Latins built New Delhi after a lot of negotiations about different locations, and so I won't go into the history of that because it's too it will take a lot of time if I go into that. <clears throat> so after they decided to in the present location to locate the Rashtrapati Bhavan on top of the Raisina Hill, the idea was that they locate the, the, the main building of the Viceroy in a higher location than of Red Fort and Jama Masjid, yeah. which are the two power centers of the earlier regime. Yeah. So they built on this hillock and they also drew an axis from the center of the parliament, which at the back goes and it's the Jaipur column, uh, to to in perfect alignment, visual alignment to Jama Masjid Do. So if when one walks on a clear day in Kanaut Place, looking towards the east, one can see, uh, looking uh, towards the north, you can very clearly see the domes of Jama Masjid in access to the Parliament Street. So Parliament Street was made for that purpose. So mm -hmm. this Parliament Street in original plan went towards Jama Masjid, but since that is a that is a mosque and not a not a monument of the of the colonizers. The road bifurcates into two separate points. Two new vistas are opened up. One opening the a new square, which the British had planned but it was not built. Uh, it, they had planned to have a new square in front of the Shah Jahani Darwaza, which is the which is the door from which Shah Jahan used to exit to go to the mosque, mosque for his namaz and go back. Yeah. So they were planning a new square there with a sculpture piece of King George in the middle of it. So one, one unit was going there and the other was going back to St. James Church. Hmm. Yeah. So it bifurcated into two, two roads which would physically have the terminal elements as the St. George's statue in the square on one side and St. James Church on the other. So that was the original colonial plan. But fortunately or unfortunately as history would have it, I would say fortunately, uh, they couldn't execute this plan fully. They made the access right up to the old city gate. But at that time there was uh, 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 an incident called the Kanpur Mosque incident which broke out in Kanpur where the British tried to widen a road and they demolished a mosque. And there was a very big riot in Kanpur. So they quickly withdraw from making this road because this would have meant complete destruction of the Muslim settlement, the, the, the dense Muslim settlements south of Jama Masjid. So they quickly stopped their road there and they created a kind of terminal space there. It is called the Hamdard Chowk now. Uh, mm. Because there's a big on that building there, and they stopped there. Yeah? But interestingly, during emergency, Sanjay Gandhi, with Jagmohan as the chairman of the New Delhi Municipal Corporation, attempted to redo that road. Yeah? Jagmohan called it the Road of Lightning, which will strike the monuments of the old city, the lightning that will strike the door. And he wanted to cut through that, uh, the old fabric and redo that road which was conceptualized by Latins and was abandoned because of Kanpur Mosque incident. But as luck would have it, they lost the next election. And in 1976 and 77, you had a new Janta government who decided to reconstruct the areas which they demolished. They demolished that area, it was called the... Uh, the <coughs> Uh, it was called the Turkoman Gate incident, in which 160 people were shot dead by the police. Okay. And their idea was to create a 40 story building there. But all that thing never realized because yeah. they lost the next election. Yeah. And uh, so now the interesting thing is that all the important buildings of Delhi, important institutions of Delhi, have progressively developed along this Parliament Street. I don't know whether that's by design 
or it's a it's again one of those interesting historic accidents mm. yeah delhi seems to be the venue of a series of historic accidents which only makes sense in hindsight mm. yeah so when i look at it as an urban historian i can see that road as that road parliament street has been inviting all the tall buildings of delhi mm. the first tall buildings to come up was the bank of baroda which was a 10 or 11 story building then we have on the very same street the development of the lic building designed by charles yeah. korean yeah. that time and it goes further and now we have the mcd tower which is 23 yes. floors and is the highest building in delhi it's a little taller than qutub minar uh, we have that coming at the end of this road right across the road from the old city but on this on this axis of the parliament and uh, we, we, uh, we should mention three more buildings uh, much prior to that one is uh, with the planning commission was working there the reserve bank was working there and the yes. opposite of the bank akashwani bhavan was working there yes yes all the building all those buildings are working there but they were not tall buildings i am talking about yes. tall buildings yes. tall building I means uh, accumulation of capital yes big institution means a larger value frame that's developing in society yeah so when you have a big footprint building like the all india radio building is a very beautiful building i think mm. building that in the 40s perhaps yes. and uh, it is an art deco building and mm. it's a very very interesting plan it's uh, all india radio still functions from the party mm. yeah and there is an attempt to restore it now uh, and similarly you have the reserve bank of india you have the planning commission you have all the big banks everything aligned on that street so it is perhaps the power corridor of delhi and it grew into a power corridor which had because it had a geometry aligning it to all these other power centers in the old city even though the road was never realized so there are there is a there is a kind of a mysterious uh, uh, play of history here where a geometric really aligned street to all these power centers grows into over a period of over 30 40 years into a corridor of power yes. yeah. so in which on one end was the parliament and on the other end was all these colonial power centers yes. now uh, sorry you wanted to say something uh, no no geometry of uh, power uh, you are mentioning the adhigarathinte jyamiti the ഞാൻ മലയാളത്തിൽ പറയും ഇത് ഇത് സെയിന്റ് ജോർജിന്റെ പ്രതി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കിങ് ജോർജിന്റെ പ്രതിമ മുതൽ സെയിന്റ് ജെയിംസ് ചർച്ച് വരെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യം കിട്ടിയതിന് ശേഷമാണെങ്കിൽ സപ്പോസ് ഇഫ് യു സി ദ പാർലമെന്റ് സ്ട്രീറ്റ് ആൻഡ് അതൊരു പവർ കോറിഡോറായിട്ട് വളർന്നതും നേരത്തെ ഞാൻ മെൻഷൻ ചെയ്തതും പ്രൊഫസർ കെ ജി രവീന്ദ്രൻ പറഞ്ഞതുമായിട്ടുള്ള ഈ രണ്ടു തരം ഹെറിറ്റേജസ് ഈ രണ്ടു തരം ഹെറിറ്റേജസിനെ നെഗറ്റ് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള നല്ലിഫൈ ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ഡെലിബറേറ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ശ്രമം നമ്മുടെ ചരിത്രത്തിന്റെ പുനർനിർമ്മിതി ചരിത്രത്തിന്റെ പുനർരചന നെഹ്റുവിന്റെ സ്മരണകൾ മറയ്ക്കാൻ ശ്രമിക്കുക അതിന്റെ ഒക്കെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് അതിന്റെ ഒരു എക്സ്റ്റൻഷൻ ആയിട്ട് തന്നെ നമുക്ക് സെൻട്രൽ വിസ്റ്റ പ്രോജക്റ്റിനെ കാണണം അത് ഈ നഗരത്തിന്റെ ആധുനിക നഗരമാക്കാനുള്ള ശ്രമവും അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേഷന്റെ ആവശ്യത്തിന് വേണ്ടിയാണെന്നുള്ള ലോജിക്കും എല്ലാം പറയുമ്പോൾ പോലും അതിന്റെ പിന്നിൽ ഉള്ള ഈ ഒരു പ്രോഗ്രാം ഉണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളതിന്റെ ഒരു വലിയ ഉദാഹരണമാണ് ഞെട്ടിപ്പിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ഉദാഹരണമാണ് പ്രൊഫസർ കെ ജി രവീന്ദ്രൻ പറഞ്ഞത് അക്ഷർധാം ഡോമുമായിട്ട് ഉള്ള ഈ പാർലമെന്റുമായിട്ടുള്ള ആ കോറിഡോറ് ഇതിനു മുൻപ് ആരും പറഞ്ഞിട്ടില്ലാത്ത ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് അക്ഷർധാം ടെമ്പിൾ വളരെ നേരത്തെ വരികയും അതിനുശേഷം അക്ഷർധാമിന് പിന്നാലെ ബാക്കിയുള്ള പ്രോജക്റ്റുകൾ നടപ്പിലാക്കാൻ ശ്രമിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതാണ് പക്ഷേ എനിക്കൊരു ചോദ്യം ചോദിക്കാനുള്ളത് ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വന്റി വൺ ടു ടു തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർട്ടി വണ്ണിന്റെ ഡൽഹിയുടെ മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാൻ നമുക്ക് സമയ പരിമിതി ഉള്ളത് കൊണ്ടാണ് വി ഹാവ് അനദർ ട്വന്റി മിനിറ്റ്സ് വിത്ത് ദസ് അപ്പൊ ഈ ഡൽഹിയുടെ മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാൻ എങ്ങനെയാണ് ഈ മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർട്ടി വൺ വരെ ഈ ഡൽഹിയെ കുറിച്ച് ഒരു മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാൻ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ആ മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാനിൽ ഇപ്പോൾ ന്യൂഡൽഹിയിലുള്ള പബ്ലിക് സ്പേസസും ഓപ്പൺ സ്പേസസും അതിന്റെ ഗ്രീനറിയും മരങ്ങളും എല്ലാം നിലനിർത്തിക്കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഒരു മാസ്റ്റർ പ്ലാൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർട്ടി വൺ വരെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നത് എങ്ങനെ അട്ടിമുറിക്കപ്പെട്ടു അതായത് ഹൗ ക്യാൻ ഇറ്റ് ബി പോസിബിൾ ടു 
you know sabotage a you know approved master plan you see master plan actually is not a 100% inflexible document it's very flexible for people in power yeah. it's inflexible for us those who are citizens who are supposed to abide by the plan but for the people who prepare the plan and the people who the power centers which take the all the shots in the preparation of the plan it is not an inflexible document they can very easily announce a change in land use announce it in the in the public there's a process and procedure that's laid out for it so that it legitimizes the uh, the final change that comes in and uh, once it is announced for change uh, they invite public interaction but they are not obliged to take any of the public suggestions they're not obliged to do it it's just a process that's identified in the master plan and it uh, it can be all the suggestions which come up can be ignored by the people who prepare the plan so it is very very uh, uh, very very easy for them to change the land uses or make changes in the master plan for instance delhi master plan has already undergone about, more, about 4 500 changes mm. yeah there are alterations legal alterations which are made to the plan so this project is also one of them one of them so it's not true that when you once you have a master plan for 20 years it's totally inflexible it is flexible for those who are in power if you have enough muscle you can bend it if you don't have the muscle you can't bend it it's it, just it, power yes that is it but i you know from the from a layman's perspective uh, i have a question for you uh, the people who are supporting this particular initiative they have two three points they you know uh, anyone can think that you know this is very legitimate one is a uh, shastri bhavan uh take shastri bhavan take krishi bhavan take nirman bhavan you in 1950s il undaya palam kettidangal aa kettidangal ella pudhi office gal function adu aalukku parayunnathu adinte adu adinte urinals pole valare moshamana idu everything is bad in these buildings appo aa buildings adhe pole nilai nilkanam enna aagrahikkunnathu seriyano appo nagaram varudha aagumbol adum varudha aagunde oru 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 chodyam adu pole even the parliament there are a section of people are saying that you know he it in the delhi parliament is not you know sufficient enough to a kudal number of member of parliaments varan povunu pudhiya janasankhya avarthanavum inda anuva anuvadikamayitt parliament veludu aagumbol ee parliament pora nadu varunnu onnu rendu ee palaye kittidangal are not sufficient enough to you know cope up with the needs of the Uh, new, uh, you know, the new world. Uh, how, how do you replay? Well, uh, there are different dimensions to this uh, project. Uh, there are different dimensions to this issue of the parliament building. Hmm. First of all, uh, quite some time ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, I was a member of a committee to revisit the parliament and look at its internal structure and use to modernize the parliament building hmm. from inside. to my uh, so when i say modernize it's not to change its architectural style but mm. to be able to fit in new amenities and facilities will suit the people who use it mm. but that time it was found that the parliament building actually has a lot of uses which can be totally extraneous to it mm. there's huge areas of kitchens and dining areas and there are many large large functions which occupy huge amount of space in the parliament yeah. and uh, it is true that from the time that uh, we started off with 250 or 300 million people we are now become 1.3 million people yeah. so naturally there is an expansion in population and the number of mps have doubled or tripled therefore they need space okay this is an argument which anybody can buy but if you look at uh, the long term with a long term perspective there are two issues which come up first of all has the existing parliament building been tested for accommodating this larger growing population of mps or not it was not mm. done yeah? mm. and it was not done no changes have been made inside 
all the functions which are extraneous to the main parliament function is also continuing to survive in Sri Lanka, and uh, the, no such attempt was made. Second thing is that our assumption that the population will keep growing, like we have seen in the last seventy years, is may not be true. It may be that the population will start declining. It has already begun to show signs, and I think Kerala is a great example of how populations have begun to decline. There are not enough children to run schools in Kerala. Too many schools which have five children and fifteen teachers. So they, uh, if that is a sign of what will happen in the future, as uh, our living standards, our education levels you now go up. We may not need a projected population as they are doing so now for running the parliament. Mm. Yeah. So uh, that's the uh, second point. First of all, the building was not tested out for its complete efficient use. Second mm. thing is that the expansion that they have projected may not come true. Mm. Okay. And the, and now the second part of your question. About whether these buildings, which are built in the 1970s and uh, 1950s and 1960s, yeah. are they still valid for use, or yeah. are they enough to accommodate the burgeoning population of the country? Yeah. Uh, that also has two separate dimensions. One is the dimension that population may not grow like it is growing. Yeah. Second thing is that even if the population grows that way. All the trends that we see in office functions in, in, in everywhere around the world is that office requirements are shrinking. Mm. It's not expanding because uh, introduction of new technologies have reduced paperless offices and you know better communication networks. No need for storing materials. No need for twenty people to run a run a program. Only two people or three people can do it. So this. Idea that it, there's a growing requirement for bureaucratic positions is also may not be true, yeah. because it shows a lack of vision about the future, or it just shows uh, the need to build more. Okay. It may be a compulsion on its own. Okay, I'm not saying that it is their compulsion to build more, but that may also be one of the compulsions. And yeah. if you look at the They want to remove all the cultural functions from the central vista, and they want to concentrate government in huge new buildings, much bigger than what it is now. Goes counter current to the declaration of the party in power that there will be less government and more governance. Mm. It's an election slogan. Okay, so this whole thing makes a mockery of that slogan. They said less government and more governance. In the, one of the important parts of your point, and Professor Kethi Devinder in your point, that is that Delhi is one of the most important sanskarika pravartanangal muduvan nadakunna area. And this new project is coming. Our, 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 You know, it is one of the greenest capitals in the world. At yet, even when we are happy, uh, Delhi is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Delhi, what is the result of that? This green Delhi, what is the result of that? This cities are retained by the government. All these concerns we all have, common normal citizens have. About issues of environment, issues of architecture, issues of heritage, issues of history, issues of culture, are non-issues for the person who is running the bulldozer. Mm. Yeah. Their issue is something else. Their issue is a purely political issue of creating a, a new axis, which will, instead of going and terminating in the Saint James Church, would go and terminate in the Akshardham Temple. Akshardham. 
Okay, there is a very. It's not even symbolic. You know, it's rather blatant an expression of that kind of an ambition. Yes, sir. Yeah? And that's the first thing. Second thing is that India Gate, which is in the middle of this, roughly in the middle of the the, uh, the Janpath Rajpath uh, ensemble. India Gate was designed as a memorial to the, the soldiers who lost their life in the First World War. Yeah, and then uh, now recently the new government has also floated a competition for a war memorial. War memorial, not for a peace memorial, <laughs> for a war memorial. Okay, so uh, that was for the First yeah. World War. Uh, first World War. Yeah, the point I'm making is this. The point I'm making is that there is a celebration of the military. Yeah? There's a constant emphasis of keeping the idea of the military and their need and their their use for uh, protecting our borders, etc. I'm not diminishing those those needs at all. But there is an attempt to constantly remind us of that. Yeah? So there is a kind of uh, a kind of predisposition. Or in a kind of obsessive engagement with the idea of war, and here you find the symbol of that war being celebrated in the heart of Rajpath. So you have the new war memorial. There's a war museum also. Yes. So in the right, in the middle, on one side you have the political power of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. In the middle you have the power of the military, and after that it goes on. And becomes a new monument, which is proposed, new kind of public art kind of monument that's proposed along the riverfront is going to emphasize nationalism. The 75th year of India is going to be celebrated by a national monument, yeah? and then it moves on in the same axis to terminate on the Akshardham Dome. So you have on one side. Uh, on one side, you have the uh, the president's estate, the power of uh, the political center. Next, you have the war memorial and the India Gate. It's the celebration of the military, and then you have the celebration of nationalism in the form of a new new monument, and then you have the celebration of religion in the uh, Akshar Dam Dome. So that is the new axis that is being drawn. It's not a it's not a small thing. Yes. It shows great collective and historic intelligence in conceptualizing this kind of an ensemble. See? So that is more crucial than the, the nature of that axis and the components which make up that axis, like political power, war, military, the nationalism and religion. Are the fundamentals of the new India as conceived by the new government? Are the mm -hmm. foundations? That is what is being laid in Delhi. It's not about how a building looked, whether Indo-Saracenic or it's a modernist or it's new or it's red sandstone, it's white sandstone. They are not issues. The main issue is this: the ideological frame that is provided by this axis. That's the way. Historian, I read it in this manner. The Nidavati Samrajingal Delhi Nagarab. Delhi Nagarab. Mandar Mudal, Valan Bogun, the Pudia Parliament of Mandarin Mare, Uru Pudia Tigarat in the Idanari, Undagan Bogunu, Enuladana, a uh, political program in the Nam in the Port Paranuikin. Otherwise, Bentapata Richodi, he heritage of Bentapata, Valar Pathana Pata, Samshi Richodi, and Amoga in a R Miniti Ulu program in other one. Ahmadabad City, Bombay City, uh, World Heritage Sites, Loga Paitrega Nagarang Light, Prakan Kipada and Mindula, Dosius, Ella Maikim Board. Adrekalaka Valia Charitra Paraya Rula Adrekalaka Trio Samra Jingal Re, Arasthana Maina Delhi Nagaratine, Paidurga Nagaramaka and Ulla Dosierso, Adinola Tiduma and Mo, UNESCO Ike India Government Aikinilla, Inulla the Ne, 
ഇവിടെ ഈ മഹാനഗരത്തിന്റെ ഹെറിറ്റേജിനെ റദ്ദാക്കാനുള്ള ശ്രമം തന്നെയല്ലേ and unesco mm-hmm. had done the first stage of approval mm-hmm. and unesco specialists were going to visit delhi to do the final approval mm-hmm. at that stage the government of india decided that to withdraw the nomination so delhi being nominated as a world heritage, world heritage city was mm-hmm. withdrawn by the government mm-hmm. when it was imminent for its approval mm-hmm. and whereas ahmedabad very quickly got approved as the heritage city ahmedabad also has a lot of history going back to 13th century and so on so it has it has big history as well uh, but the delhi thing was withdrawn because if it had become a world heritage city this project would not have been possible possible because it would explicitly bound the government by the unesco convention to retain the central vista project as it is because the whole ensemble is recognized in the urban design uh, profession as well as in the heritage profession as one of the most interesting examples of this assemblage of this kind of buildings and spaces so it's a it's an example of uh, an excellent piece of urban design so that would not have been possible if delhi had become a world heritage city so in hindsight once again as a historic accident i see that the withdrawal of the nomination by the government halfway through was in fact with the boss with the foresight that they cannot intervene in the central vista if they had declared delhi as a heritage city thank you uh, we have another uh, two and a half minutes um i do not know whether uh, any of the viewers uh, have some uh, questions for professor kati devinsen uh, i am i am able to get any questions here uh, if anyone can uh, if anyone has any questions to ask this is the time to ask if there are no questions then uh, i have my uh, last Uh, question to you is nan delhi il vaigineram ende kudumbavumayittu ipo bombay il namukku kadapurangal undu madras il namukku kadapuram undu delhi il ee maha nagarathil vaigineram kudumbavumayittu alengil vide porthunnu varunna soorthukal undengil avarumayittu vaigineramgalil poi irikkanum okkeyulla ore or open space aanu india gate ne ചുറ്റിനുമുള്ള ആ വലിയ പച്ചമ്പ് ഒരു പക്ഷെ ഇപ്പോൾ ഇത് പറയുന്നുണ്ട് ഈ ആ സ്ഥലങ്ങളെല്ലാം അതുപോലെ ഓപ്പൺ സ്പേസ് അതുപോലെ നിലനിൽക്കുമെന്ന് പക്ഷെ ദ വേ ഇറ്റ് ഗോസ് യു നോ ദ പ്രൈം മിനിസ്റ്റർ ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു സ്റ്റേ സമയ പ്രൈം മിനിസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് റെസിഡൻസ് ടു പാർലമെന്റിൽ അണ്ടർ ഗ്രൗണ്ട് പാത്തുകൾ വരാൻ പോകുന്നു വഴി വരാൻ പോകുന്നു ആളുകളുടെ ഈ ഓപ്പൺ സ്പേസിലേക്കുള്ള ഈസി ആക്സസ് സെക്യൂരിറ്റി റീസൺസ് കൊണ്ട് ഇല്ലാതാകുമോ എന്നുള്ള ഒരു ഭയം എനിക്കുണ്ട് ഹൗ ഡു യു സീ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഐ ടു ഷെയർ ദാറ്റ് ഫിയർ ബിക്കോസ് ഈവൻ ദോ ദേ ആർ സേയിങ് ദാറ്റ് ദേ വിൽ റീടൈൻ ദി ഗ്രീൻ സ്പേസസ് ആസ് ദേ ആർ ഐ വുഡ് തിങ്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻഡ് യൂസ് വിൽ ബിക്കം മച്ച് മോർ റെസ്ട്രിക്റ്റഡ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബിക്കം എൻ ഒഫീഷ്യൽ ഗവൺമെന്റൽ എൻക്ലേവ് ആൻഡ് ദീസ് പ്ലേസസ് ആർ ഹൈലി സെക്യൂർ പ്ലേസസ് യു ഗോ ടു ചണ്ഡിഗഡ് യു കൻ സീ വാട്ട് ഹസ് ഹാപ്പൻഡ് ടു ചണ്ഡിഗഡ് ദോസ് three buildings designed by lake obuja celebrated across the world celebrated in all the architecture history books are now closed spaces fully guarded by police and you cannot go near them yeah. so we have already have an example of how a democratic capital can be kept away from people that fear is certainly looming large also on this case നമ്മുടെ സമയം സമയം ഏതാണ്ട് അവസാനിച്ചിരിക്കുകയാണ് നാം ഇതെല്ലാം ചർച്ച ചെയ്യുന്നു എല്ലാ ലോകത്തിലുള്ള ഹെറിറ്റേജ് കൺസർവേഷനിസ്റ്റ് എല്ലാ ആളുകളും ഈ പ്രോജക്ടിനെതിരെ സംസാരിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് പക്ഷേ ദിസ് പ്രോജക്ട് ഈസ് ഗോയിൻ ടു ഹാപ്പൻ അവസാനമായിട്ടുള്ള എന്റെ ചോദ്യം സെൻട്രൽ വിസ്റ്റ 
ന്യൂ ഡൽഹി റീഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് പ്രോജക്ട് ഇതുപോലെ തന്നെ മുന്നോട്ട് പോവുകയല്ലേ ആർ യു ആൻ ഒപ്റ്റിമിസ്റ്റ് ഓർ ആർ യു ആ പെസിമിസ്റ്റ് വെൻ ഇറ്റ് കംസ് ടു ഡൽഹിസ് ഫ്യൂച്ചർ ദിസ് ഇസ് മൈ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ആൻഡ് വി ആർ കൺക്ലൂഡിംഗ് ദ സെഷൻ see first of all i don't believe that delhi's future is dependent only on this central space mm. one space or a group of government buildings don't make a city mm. city has got 23 million people it's got a 140 square kilometer space there are many little little, little delhis which cluster up to make up the larger, larger delhi there are urban villages there are historic districts there are Uh, poor locations there are expensive places there are big multi story buildings there are... delhi is a, has a very diverse built form and i don't believe that this will be consequential to delhi's quality of life but we should remember that central vista is not does not belong to delhi it's it is a nation space it belongs to the entire india's imagination of what our capital is so it is that imagination which is under attack not the city of delhi yeah on that note uh, we are concluding today's session professor tj vindran nammude mahataya nagaram nammude mahataya talasthanam as you rightly said this is a rajyathinte podu idam anand ഈ ഇടത്തിന്റെ പാരമ്പര്യവും ഹെറിറ്റേജും പൈതൃകവും എല്ലാം സംരക്ഷിക്കപ്പെടട്ടെ എന്നുള്ളതും പുതിയ അധികാരത്തിന്റെ ഇടനാഴികൾ നമ്മളുടെ ഓർമ്മകളെ മായ്ച്ചു കളയാൻ ഉള്ളതായിരിക്കരുത് എന്ന പ്രത്യാശയിൽ നമുക്ക് ഈ സെഷൻ അവസാനിപ്പിക്കാം താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു വെരി മച്ച് താങ്ക് യു ഫോർ ഹാവിംഗ് മീ